have just gotten back from the hairdresser. We're all looking pretty bad. <laughs> We're on the way to the airport right now. Dad's dropping us off to the airport to go to Hawaii. Last one. Five. There's five suitcases, four people. Come on, you're really leaving. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, see you guys. Bye. Love you all. Bye. Bye. Line up. Bye. 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 Yeah, Bill. Love you guys. Have fun. South Australia today which means I can't take any fruit and veggies over the border um, you're not allowed to take anything because of the fruit fly issue so I'll just have to buy some more when I get there um, before we start heading north however you can take bacon so we're taking bacon what do you reckon buddy oh yeah you know in um, pretty much every other road trip it's been me and the girls or me and Jen and the girls um, so the cars always been chock-a-block full never been an option to sleep in the car uh, which I don't mind, I mean, I love swagging it, it's no problem, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, if we can just pull over the side of the road, find some nice spot, um, roll the seat forward, roll my swag out like this, and I just pop it up and just stick something under it, and I've got a nice flat space. Put, you know, Buddy can sleep down, put his bed over there. So it's really about trying something different this time and um, trying to keep it as simple as I possibly can. Um, so I can just literally just pull up, roll out the swag in the car, and uh, sleep. So these tubs here, which I uh, borrowed from Australia Post, they actually come in really handy for uh, packing for trips like this. Um, they're nice rigid plastic, and they're a good size. They're a good height if I put them on the roof rack. Um, you know, they sit at about the right height, not too high, not too shallow. And they stack and they, they interlock with each other. We've got about half a dozen of these tubs around the place, which we use. Obviously, for the most part, we're using them to take orders down the post office, which is what they're designed for. Um, but when I go on a road trip, they also come in very handy for packing gear and stacking it nicely in the car and on the roof. So I'll just show you how I set up my roof rack here. Um, you see in the background there. That's the cover. It's like a tonneau cover that goes on a ute. I prefer to use that rather than a bag, which is sealed. The idea is it's like a lid that goes over the roof rack instead of being in a bag. So I can roll it to the front and then I can just roll it down and just use the um, elastic straps to hold it in place. And the good thing is you don't have to then tie everything down on the rack. It basically does the job of holding everything in place. So I just basically put everything where it needs to go and um, pull the cover over the top, run the elastic around the edge, and we're good to go. Now, um, in the front of it, 
it's got a um, it's got a floor in about about the first I don't know 80 centimeters I suppose. So any rain coming towards us if we're driving into the rain um, doesn't get up uh, up under the front. But the rest of it from there back is actually um, just open on the bottom. And I use these mesh mats here, and because they're uh, because they're mesh, they actually um, let everything breathe. Uh, no water comes up underneath because there's just no situation where water's going up under the roof rack. So the floor, having a sealed floor is kind of redundant if you ask me, except for the front where you want to just want to keep that rain out from uh, when you're driving into the rain. The good thing is though, is if, you, if you're packing up camp and it's raining, which happens sometimes, if you've got a bag on the roof, you've got to put all the wet stuff into the bag. When the bag's open, it's getting water in it. Then you've got to seal it all up and you end up with a bag full of wet stuff then you go in the, you know, out in the sun and you end up with this big steamy hot mess in this bag and uh, it's really inviting mold and rot and things like that. In this situation, as you're driving along, the air comes and circulates up around under the roof rack, um, through the mesh, around everything that's on there and it basically dries everything out. And so you can pack the roof rack up on a rainy day. Um, everything can be wet when you're loading it up. Uh, I mean, you're trying to avoid it, of course, but sometimes you can't help it. Um, you drive all day, you arrive at your camp and everything's dry. And I've tested it you know, a dozen times and it's, it, it works very well. So I had that tonic cup custom made by just a company that does the, the um, tarps on the side of trucks and, and things like that. Uh, it cost me about four or 500 bucks seven or eight years ago and uh, it's been absolutely brilliant. It's been all over the country with us many times and other than replaced elastic, it's, it's like brand new. I want these two to be on the bottom because they're the heavier ones and um, so you can't fill them too far because the, the one that goes on top sits inside it. That's it guys, I think we're just about ready to go. Hey, you coming? You gonna come too? Or do you want to stay here? Hmm? What do you want to do? There you go. Up you get. Up. Come on. Come on. Up. 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 You can do it. Come on. Good boy. Alright. Shall we go? Shall we do this? You ready for some adventure? Just you and me? It's a bit of an unusual time of the day to be leaving on a road trip. Normally we'd be leaving in the morning, but it um, didn't quite work out that way. I was actually um, originally going to be leaving yesterday, and for one reason or another, it just didn't work out. Um, I had to have a chat to the vet about Buddy. Um, he's got a problem with his knee. Uh, I'll talk to him more a bit about that later. And uh, by the time I got around to talking to the vet, the day was getting away and um, so I thought no I'll just postpone it till today and uh, then the packing took a little longer than I thought and next thing you know it's three o'clock and um, stopping at the vet and stopping to get fuel and whatever else and uh, here we are at five o'clock on the Westgate heading out of town so I'm only gonna go um, I'm just gonna keep driving basically until I've had enough and then we're gonna pull over at a roadside stop somewhere and um, we'll just sleep in the car tonight, and then tomorrow we'll uh, get up and go the rest of the way to Adelaide.
So this is the McDonald's uh, Roadhouse Servo at the land, which is about an hour, about an hour out of Melbourne. Pretty, um, pretty usual stop for us. Generally, it's uh, breakfast or uh, lunch that we're stopping here, not dinner. But anyway, that's all right. He's such a good catch. <laughs> he's fast. Me? Oh, he's missed it. I bought Buddy a burger. Since this is dinner. Do you like burgers? Yeah? How much do you like them? Pretty good? Oh, look at all that. Mm -hmm. Can you yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he likes that. It's got all the good stuff in it. He doesn't chew anything, he just swallows it. If you've ever seen Dalmatians eat before, the moment they see and think about food, they start drooling. And they're dripping all over the place here. I'll show you in the daytime, sometime on this trip. Get his food out and start talking about food and start, you know, doing anything with food and his mouth just goes nuts and starts watering like a tap. Doesn't that, hey? Want some of this? Want some? Good morning, guys. Here we are. At uh, Border Town, we made it as far as Border Town, uh, not actually the town, the border. We're actually on the border at the uh, little rest stop on the border, pulled up right on top of it. So, uh, pretty much rained all night, and um, had trucks driving past fairly steadily, <laughs> but uh, was, otherwise, it was fine. I suppose we should tear ourselves out of bed, eh, hey, buddy? What do you reckon, eh? Hey? The reason I had to stop off at the vet yesterday, uh, just after we left home, was to get some anti-inflammatories for Buddy. He's actually got a um, an ACL ligament, an uh, anterior cruciate ligament issue in his back left knee, and um, it's like he's injured it. And because we've got a lot of stairs at home, we think that um, it's the running because he runs down the stairs. Whenever somebody rings the doorbell or he hears something outside, he runs down the stairs and barks and carries on. And because we have uh, wooden floors. The, the hard floors and he's bouncing down, he's sort of jumping down the stairs and landing pretty hard. We think that that's what's actually ruptured his ligament. And about four or five weeks ago, he just started limping um, quite seriously. And um, so we gave it a couple of weeks and didn't really get better. Um, took him to the vet. The vet sort of poked and prodded and said, yeah, it looks like his ACL has uh, gone, which is apparently pretty common for dogs, especially larger dogs. He's not a massive dog, but he's kind of a, you know, he's not small either and, and the larger they are the more likely they are to have the problem and um, so he said give it a give it a few more weeks see what happens sometimes it, the, these things just heal themselves other other times they need surgery um, in the week leading up to this trip I've been keeping an eye on him and um, it's pretty much not going away uh, it, it, every day he's limping to some extent and um, so I got some anti-inflammatories, um, enough to last us the month for the trip, and um, hopefully that'll get us through. Um, generally, I'm walking him on the lead, but every now and then you just got to let him go. Like you just seen him running around here, he goes absolutely mental when you let him off because he's just a dog that loves to run. And um, so, boxing him up in the car and then walking him on the lead all the time—it's um, pretty frustrating for him. Um, so. This is a good spot since the, the, the ground's nice and soft because of the rain. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> he's going in the water if he's not careful. <laughs> <laughs> he 
yeah, he just loves to run, as you can see. And um, so, one of these things, um, we'll have to look at getting surgery done for him uh, when we get back. And, uh, you yeah, know, that'll be expensive, but he's only three years old, so we've got to look after him. We've got to get, you yeah, know, a bit more time out of him yet. Hey, buddy, hey? I want you to be around for a while. things I want to do while I'm here in Adelaide, I'm only going to be here till tomorrow, is make a like a windfoil for the front of the roof rack. Um, the bag at the front tends to get a bit flat and uh, so it's a bit of creating a bit of drag. So I'm hoping I've got some scrap sheet metal uh, lying around. I think I have. I've got some in the garage. I'll have a look when I get there. Uh, if I've got the materials there, it should be pretty easy to do. Pretty straightforward job just try and um, create a bit more aerodynamics in the front of the car. The, the headwind driving over this time has just been relentless. And um, it's made, I reckon it's a good 20% more fuel I've used um, this time than what I would normally. It's a pretty dramatic difference. I mean, once we get north out of Adelaide, the wind will calm down anyway, but uh, still, everything I can do to save fuel is gonna be a good thing. Inside today. So good to see you, darling. You too. I wasn't sure when I was going to see you. No, I wasn't sure when I was going to get her either. <laughs> hey, I stopped on the side of the road. And oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the way to go. Hello, darling. Hello. Hello, sweetheart. How have you been? Oh, gosh, you look even bigger than last time. <laughs> yeah. You want to go inside, darling? Hey? Yeah, he's a good boy. Oh. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? Hey? Oh, yes. Oh, meat. that smells good. <laughs> Carrots, onion. Oh, we'll have to find something for you to eat. So you come to Nana's house. This is why you love coming to Nana's, don't you, hey? <laughs> Nana's <laughs> Nana she, eats dog food. Just... <laughs> <laughs> you get to eat Nana's dog food. <laughs> and Nana's on a pension. <laughs> um, mm. Here you go. My oh boy. It looks a lot like the casserole we make for you, doesn't it, hey? Is it good? Good boy. He says, it's almost as good as yours, Daddy. <laughs> almost. It hasn't got any rice or pasta in it. <laughs> it's just all meat. It's even better, isn't it? All right, let's go and see if we can find a bit of sheet metal and uh, make some sort of a wind deflector for the front of the roof rack. Nothing there. Hmm. Could swear I had uh, some flat sheets actually. That might be them. Let's see if I can get one of those out. Almost exactly the right size. That could be a bonus. Because it starts to rain in the moment. I'll go out there. So I found that in the scrap. We did a massive clean up of the garage in here and all around the whole block um, last year. And um, put all the scrap metal that we found, the old swing set and stuff like that, we put all in a pile there and rang out the local uh, recycling place to come and pick it up. And they said, yeah, yeah, we'll come and pick it up. We'll bring a skip. They never came, so it's all still there. So I'll give it a clean up and uh, we'll measure it up. The idea is that if I put that plate on here, I'll come up to about there. And I can make a much smoother front on the rack there and um, hopefully more aerodynamic. 
look at that. Literally couldn't have made it any better. That's unbelievable. <laughs> that just doesn't happen. Nothing ever works that right the first time. All right, time to give this a really good thorough clean and give it a black paint. All right, we'll give that a few minutes to work its magic. Now guys, there's not a lot of light in here because there's no power in this garage at the moment. So we're just making do with a bit of crappy daylight through the window. So the goal is going to be to uh, paint it. Oh, actually I'll clean it with turps. Then I'll drill the holes. Then I'll give another bit of a wipe down. And then we'll paint it. Now I bought this thing for our, uh, to put the flag on for the Simpson Desert trip. And it's very good for making bigger holes, for making smaller holes bigger. So let's give it a whirl, eh? Herbs five or ten minutes to dry, evaporate off, and then we'll uh, paint it. Oh, where's the marble? There it is. Yeah. Well, that's a good start. I'm going to give it maybe uh, half an hour, let that dry, and then I'll give it a couple more coats, and then I'll let it dry overnight, and uh, we'll be all good. All right, guys, it's the next morning. Uh, let's go and check out the paint and see if it's dry. Um, of course, it's going to be dry, but let's go and have a look. All right, there we go. Look at that. Nice matte finish. All right, looks pretty good, eh? So we'll go and stick it on the car and see how it looks. All right, the battery went flat while I was putting it on there. Um, so I discovered when I came back to grab the camera, but it all fitted. The uh, screw holes and everything lined up and uh, looks good. We'll see if we notice any difference in the fuel economy.